It's party time in Meeple Town. It's party time. We're gonna get on down. Dude, we're gonna do our top five party games. I think we did the dance. We're good. We can move on. Oh, all right. So with New Year's coming up, we just had a little Christmas. We thought we would do party games. Now we do know with COVID-19, it's a little, the partying is not happening. Uh, at least not as much for us. Yeah. That, so we, we kind of debated on this, but we realized that this list can be very, uh, you can use this anytime. You anytime. To, That's what we thought. You can use this in, in 2025. When it gets better in 2021, you can use this list if you can't lose it. Lose it? Lose it. Use, use it, it or lose it. There you go. With some of these games, though, you can play with your family. That's right? true. Depending on how big your family is and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to do our top five party games of all time. Dean, kick us oh, off with your number yeah. five, baby. I tell you, if you guys watch us, you know that I struggle with these kind of lists because I, I don't do. know. These are tough. Right off the bat, I like the I like this game a lot, but my problem is, is, oh. it, is it a party game? Came a lot. Mm. Some people that I asked recently said that this is not a party game, but I would say that it is. The weight is a 1.5 I've never played it, but I would say it is. Okay. You can play eight players. That's a party, baby. Yeah, but it's the it's the rules, I guess, of this I get one. it. So this is a <laughs> it's not a racing game, it is a betting game. You okay? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, I'm struggling. Oh, uh, in this pictures. game, you've got these camels that are stacked up sometimes, and they're gonna be moving around the board, and you're going to be putting your your bets on the ones that you think are gonna win, and you're gonna try to end up with the most money at the Whoops. end of the game. It's really simple, it's stacked got stacked up little, like so, huh? Uh yeah. The second edition, this edition has some really cool elements like the the plastic pyramid where the dice are going to fall out of the the camels are really chunky and the board's really cool so anyway this one's a lot of fun great table table presence and you I, kind of you were selling me on it till you said there's chunky camels chunky camels and then that that sounds really gross to me i think that's quite the selling point john Oof. Um, but anyway, I think this one, it, it can work really well with a lot of different groups. It might have the, a couple of, it, there's four things that you can do on your turn, basically. And so it can be maybe a little rules heavy, but I don't think so. I think you can introduce this to people. My whole family plays it. We love it quite a bit. Camel Up. Yeah. Okay. So Camel Up did, by the way, just so you know, it is, the weight is 1.51. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's pretty low. And also on top of that, it is the number 14th party game. So, hey, you're picking number 14 on BGG, number 63 overall in the family. I'm going to let you, you know, go while I'm doing it. Okay. You can show the little screen there and then so forth and so on. So, my number five is a game that is a good game. That is Spyfall. Here's the reason why I picked Spyfall at number five. Is this my favorite game to play? It's yeah, not. I, mean, it's, it's I your, like it. Your fifth favorite party five. game. I like it. But here's why I pick it. Because I can play this game anywhere anytime all this is is cards right and so not only this but a little spoiler a little secret even though i don't know if they like it or not you got to keep it in that thing there <laughs> so, uh, that's a here we go there's there's a web there's there's some websites there's more than one isn't there if you go to spyfall.app you can actually play spyfall for free on your phone and what i like about that is that um the other day we were I was eating pizza at this pizza joint with some folks and we all just I just said, Hey, everyone pull out your phones, let's play some spyfall. Everyone pulled it out, we hoot and hollered, had a really good time. What do you do in Spyfall, Dean? Well, you're trying to discover who the spy is. So you've got everyone who knows a location, but you have somebody who is not at that location. They're not so privy to where you're at. Everyone's at school, but one person doesn't know that it's school. Yeah. And so you're trying to find out if you're at school, if you know where the location is, who the spy is, while the spy is trying to figure out what the location is. So you want to give information, right? But not too much. Yeah. Because if you say to my son, hey, this is somewhere you go almost every day, that might be really a big right. clue. And then the spy might be able to get it immediately. So I think that's really fun. Yeah. And I like how I can, uh, we played this on a, going to grandma's house for Christmas. We all played this on the way down there, uh, my family, and we had a great time. So I, I just, that's why it's number five, because you can just play this thing anywhere. Um, check it out if you haven't checked it out. Yeah. I played game. this one a lot. The only reason it did not make my list is because I've played it a ton, yeah. a ton, and it kind of played it out a little bit for a while. So I'm going to slide this over. You should have put that back up there. There we now, go. Now it's time to fall. slide it out. All right, All right, on to my number four. My number four is a game that I have played a lot, a lot. Yes, you have. Of this game. This is Cash and Guns. Pew, pew, pew. 
Um, now this one is, uh, you, you're just pointing, pointing these foam guns your at pony. people. And you are trying to get people to, to guess whether or not you are actually going to have a bang card that you're playing, which will take away some health from them, or a click card, which means that, hey, psych, I got my gun pointed at, but I'm not, I'm, it's not loaded, right? It's yeah. just a, it's a squirt gun pointing at you. And this one's been Whoa, a, look a at that picture. picture. Oh my goodness. Oh, Dude, I, I want to play with those guys. <laughs> That's really creepy. Um, it's a fun hoot and holler game. You know, the, I play with that kid, the gun aspect of it could be something that you don't like. You know, so I can get why people wouldn't like this. For me, I've had a lot of fun with this with with a lot of people that I've played with. That is cash and guns. The idea is to get the most loot. You're trying to get the most money yeah. uh, by staying in the game. A lot of push your luck. A lot of a lot of bluffing in this game. A lot of fun. I'm okay with cash and guns. It's not my favorite. Um, every time I play this at my house, someone runs off crying. <laughs> I'm just, just being real <laughs> because they're mad about someone shot them and what all that kind of. And you're yeah, always picking can, on me. Yeah. But with adults, hopefully that doesn't happen. Does and it? if it does, you're going to point at them more often. <laughs> you're for sure going to get shot. I like it. Don't love it. Um, cash and guns for you, number four. Cash and guns. I love it. All right. So my number four is a game that came out, I mean, fairly recently. This was the 2019, I'm going to let you uh, do this, Spill the Jars winner. And that is just one. Now, here's the thing about Just One. This is always a hit. I mean, this is always a hit. Always. I mean, would you agree with that, Dean? Always. Every time I bring Every this time. out, it, it's so simple. I'm sure most people... Actually, you know what? Maybe not well, you most people. got the new people. version, too. I don't have that one. I do. So, I was going to say most people know how to play this, but not, not so. We're, um, anyways. It's not so. <laughs> well, I just realized, you know, some folks may be looking that don't play games, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this, right? So, yeah. they can learn uh, learn or figure out what they might like. In just one, it's very simple. There's going to be a card. You're going to pick number one to five. It's going to give you word. The word's going to be pizza, for example. Everybody else is going to write a word on the little dry erase board, and you're going to flip them around with the person who is the guesser who doesn't know what the word is with their eyes closed. And if Dean puts cheese and I put cheese, guess what happens? We erase, we erase those. So the, the people that are writing them down, you have to, you want to point them in the right direction, but you might want, not want to be too obvious, kind of like Spyfall, right? You want right. to do too obvious because then someone else might write the same word. And if that happens, they're erased and that really hurts you. This is a cooperative game. Every time I play it, it's a dead gum uh, hit. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've brought this out so many times, and people just play it, play it, play it, play it. Love this game, I do too. Yep. Number four is just one for me. Yeah, totally agree with that. In fact, we um, we played this a lot over Zoom, uh, a mm -hmm. lot actually, quite a few times during quarantine. We played this on Zoom, and it works really well there. Uh, you just have to have a dry erase board or a you know even a That's piece a of paper. Point. But we all had copies of it, so we could just use the the little placards that are in there. Uh, but it, it works really well. Sweet. That's yeah. my number four. What, it's just one. What's your number three, main? All right, my number three is a game that is kind of a hit or miss game, but for me, it's where a is game. just one? By the way, sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up. I was curious as where this thing is at. Well, let's get that down the right thing. Three overall in party games, one sixty four, so pretty high. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm interested to know what number one. Wits and wagers is probably up there. I would guess. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, um, so anyway, this has been a hit or miss game with certain people. This is word slam. It's been a hit. It's been a miss with me. It's been a big <laughs> hit for me. But basically, in this one, it's kind of like charades, except you're using. Oh, you can see cards. that I have it rated three out of ten. <laughs> three out of ten. That's ridiculous. It's fun with. I hated that this game. Is the number eighty seven party game. Eighty seven. That's not super Let's high. Scroll through that. Um, um, okay, so in this one, it's basically charades, except you're using cards, and the cards are going to have different descriptive words on it. Um, you've got these different, uh, uh, I, th I think it's nouns and ver or adjectives and verbs, and I guess nouns too, um, and then some other category. So you're just playing as many cards as you can, giving hints along the way. You've got two different teams, and they're trying to figure out the same word. Mm -hmm. And so my team's over here working. I'm showing you this car, this card over here. Like if it's taxi, I might put car in yellow or something like that. And then the other team is trying to do the same thing, and you're just shuffling through the cards as fast as you can to try to get the right ones out there. I really like it. If you like charades, I think this is one that can be a big hit. And it's one that's super easy to teach and introduce to people. Um, maybe even the easiest to teach out of most any of these games, I would say. But again, if people don't like those charade style games, I don't think you're going to like we this. We tried it as a group, right? And yeah. it went really poorly. For some people. Fairly poorly. Some people some liked people. it. Some people For didn't some, love it. Yeah. Yeah. I get why people... I mean, it's just, it's just your style or not. And this mm -hmm. one's not my style. It's your style. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised this is number three. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like this you love this game. Yeah. It's, right. it's really good. All right. So that was number three for you. My number three is a game that could be number one. It's really high. There's no doubt about it. It's the classic. 
This is this is one of the classic party games now. Party anything? game number two. Yeah, and that is that was twenty, and that's interesting. That twenty fifteen, I could say it's not that it's not even that old. No, and that it could be a classic. In code names, it's super simple. You've got a bunch of words out here. You want to click on one of those? Sorry. Pull yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, that's not it. All these artistic oh, pictures. Man. Come on, here. give it's us an idea. Yeah, there is one up there. Scroll up right there. Oh yeah, there. That we gives go. you an okay. idea, I okay. guess. Right. Yeah. Um. So there's going to be a bunch of words out. And what you're basically trying to do is you're going to give uh, a one word clue and you're trying to get people to guess, hopefully, multiple words, right? You have words that you're trying to get them to guess. You also have words that you absolutely do not want them to get or you're in trouble. So you, you have that fine line of trying to get them to guess as many as you want, but also being scared that, oh man, if I get the one, the assassin is what it's yeah. called, right? Um, you, you get the assassin, then, oh no, that, that, that we're done, we're done so. Super simple, absolute blast. I, I really like code names. It's mm -hmm. one that just keeps it just stays on my list because it's just it's a hit every time, easy to teach, and people really like this game. Yeah. You know, if I look at my list of games, my most played games, it's it's this code names, there. Spyfall and uh one at Werewolf, which was close to making my list and it did not. It's just I've I I've played them so much. You I know? get it. Code names I really like the. I love code names for sure. This would have been like number six on my list probably, but it's because I've played it so much. Um, that's the only reason why it's not super high on there. But I really like code names. I get that. I mean, when you play yeah. a thing a lot, a lot, a lot, it does kind of, it can go down a little bit for you. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number two is a game that plays up to eight people. I try to have a little bit of a mixture of games on my list. You know, I've had some some auctioning. Some Are you trying to say that my list games. is not? It's all the same. You just went through mean? and picked out the top code five. Names. Spyfall and just one. Those are totally different. <laughs> Sushi Go Party is the drafting game on my list. 33 and, family game. Um, Ooh, family. It says it's not. It didn't say party, Dean. Well, it says it on the box. It's Sushi Go Party, right? I like sushis. I like sushis. I like sushi. Ooh, I didn't give that one a super high score either. Um, it's not and I like parties. A, it's, it's listed as a party game. It's just not high. It's higher I know than it's a party game. There we go. Uh, in this game, you are drafting cards. So you each start off with cards in your hand. I'm going to take a card, pass them on, take a card, pass it on. And you're set collecting different types of There's sushi. There's a lot of different cards, as you with, can see there. With Sushi Go Party. Now, Sushi Go is fun, but Sushi Go Party really brings it up like to an 11 because it's it's adding more cards, more variability. Sushi Go Party is an 11? It bumps it up to an 11. This better be on your top 50 <laughs> list of all time. It's not. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> but you just I, gave in so quick. <laughs> but I do like this one a lot. And again, with that party element, the different cards that you can add in really changes it quite a bit yeah. with the variability. Sushi Go doesn't have as much variability, but this one, you I played this one a lot too. Um, and this is you one that you can play it. Belt, this yeah, score. you'll play it's it. Cute. You'll play it, you know, oh, let's play again. Let's play again. Let's do add some other cards. That It's that kind of game. Yeah. It's a Lay's, Lay's potato chip game. This is not one of my personal favorites, but every time I bring this out, it's a hit. Yeah. And literally, so many times I've brought this game out and people have immediately bought it. So if I'm going into a situation, like if you're someone right now that doesn't play games a whole lot and you're looking at this part of this and going, I want a game for my family to play on New Year's Eve. This is a hit most of the time, almost all the time. Seriously, this, people love this game. I'm just not a big set collection person, and that's all this game is, is yeah. you're collecting sets. But you're drafting, it's super fast. People love that game. So even though I don't have it on my top five, I would totally recommend it because most... I'm, I'm in the minority, I think. By yeah, that there's also there's a dice rolling sushi roll, which I probably like the mechanisms in that game a little bit better. Yeah. This one, I think, is a little more approachable, and it has more replayability. Like, the, the rules in this one aren't as heavy as, as yeah. sushi roll. Not that it's a heavy game, but you get it. Um, so this that's why I recommend this over sushi roll. All right, my number two, and my number one was, these were two very difficult games for me to decide on which one is number two and number. These can be absolutely reversed. It doesn't matter. Number two is Deception. A murder in Hong Kong. There's been a murder. There's been a murder in Hong Kong. So in this game, this is really easy to teach. It is a um, social deduction game for sure. In this game, there are going to be play. There's one player that's a murderer. Everybody else. Well, here's here's the here's the theme. You're going to investigate a murder, but here's the twist. One of the investigators. This is how you play the game, right? Is here. the murderer. <gasps> dun dun dun! And now in this game, depending on your player count, you can have a murderer, you can have an accomplice with the murderer, you can have a witness that witnesses the crime. But basically, what you're trying to do is, if you're an investigator, you're trying to figure out who killed and what the murder weapon was and what evidence uh, they left behind. If you're the 
murderer, you don't want people to pick those things. Yeah. Um, there's also a role that's, if you can see here with the bullets, they're the forensic scientist. And what they do, the way that you get clues, because they know who the murderer is, what the weapon is, all that stuff, they just put a bullet on a card. And the interesting thing about this is sometimes that information is super helpful. Other times, as a forensic scientist, it's not. Like, you're like, oh, I got to pick one of these. And then the teams can get hyper-focused sometimes on something, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Like that is not <laughs> that is not what they need to be focused on, and it is an absolute blast. I brought this uh, out at Christmas with my family and my wife's family. Everyone really enjoyed it, actually. And just this is such a good game. If you like social deduction, if you like a uh, pretty quick game, 20, 30 minutes a piece. Every time we played it, we played it about three times because everyone loved it so much. This game is really awesome. Yeah, I've not played it. Surprising. You would love yeah, this game. I, I think I would absolutely love this You would this love game. this game. It, it gives me feels of Mysterium, which almost made my list, but I thought it was a little more complex than what I'd want in a party game, I guess. So, anyway. And this is not, this is, it takes about a round or two and everyone's totally got this game. Okay. All right. So. I'll have to check this one out. My number one has already uh -oh. been mentioned by John. Just one. Is, do you do that on purpose? Number one is just one. There oh, is oh, just oh, one. Oh, and you know, I'll write some num names down and some words down. It's not just names. If I can only have one party game, it, this that's it. Just one. That's all I would need. I love this game so much. I don't really want to. I don't have to go more into yeah, all of that of than we already there. talked about. I like they're, it though. They're about to tumble over. I like it. Um, yeah, just one is is so good, and it's every time I've introduced it to people, it's always been a hit. Uh, Number three I've, party game of all time. I, both of us, we've sold a lot of these games. A it's lot so of Just One because we've introduced it to a lot of people. People buy it all the time. Big hit. Yep. Yeah. Love Just One. Just One is absolutely amazing. No, totally understand why that one is spilled to All right. My number one is Decrypto, which is, I think, the number one party game of all time. So we actually had one, two. You haven't even played it. No, what I'm saying is, like, you're dogging me on my list, and all you did is just pick the number one, two, and three. No, you picked the number three. Oh, yeah, I did. Never mind. <laughs> I, did, I did pick number one, two, and three, because I picked just one as well. Decrypto was an absolute blast. In Decrypto, you're trying to get your team... Uh, Decrypto. There you go. That's the, uh, the generic version. <laughs> is that right? No. Oh. In this game, you have four words that you're trying to get your team to, to get in the correct order. So you may get four, three one, two, and you have to get them to say these in the correct order, and you can give them clues to that, but here's the thing, the opposing team gets to hear the clues as well. And basically over the course of the game, the opposing team is trying to figure out what your words are, and are trying to get it in, they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to figure out what your words are, why you're trying to get your folks to keep saying the right words and not have miscommunication tokens because you didn't get it in the right order and all that stuff. So there's a lot of just, thinking through, oh, another, another, just like, I think this is a common theme in my games. How much information do I divulge? How, you know, how do I make it, do I get it to where I know they're going to get it, but then it's going to give them a really good idea of what that word could possibly be. No, I don't want to do this. How vague am I going to be? Sometimes my mind goes to crazy places and people are like, John, you are insane if you think that that helps. That helps, that happens a lot. The crypto is awesome. I and the same with like the code names, like that same kind of idea. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Where uh -huh. it's like they're like, dude, you're just you're too far out there. Yeah. Um, it happens to me all the time. Here's the thing about decrypto, though. I think this is probably the most complicated one to teach, even though it's not weighted high. It's just you have to play through a round or two for people to understand what's happening. So because of that, I don't get it to the table quite as much as you know, Deception Hong Kong, Just One, Code Names, all that kind of stuff. But still, like it's it's amazing. Love decrypto. Yeah. Uh, I've not played it. It's, I've seen people have a I great time. Yeah, you're gonna, with this I think one. that could be really high. Maybe even your number one. That and Deception probably are, are yeah, ones that I would like them. quite a bit. Uh, I'm just going to mention a few that I did not add to my list, but I wanted to make mention anyway. Right. I had reasons for these. Point Salad only plays six, but it's another card drafting That's game. Why I, I think it's a lot of fun. I might have put it on there if it played more. Yeah. Players. And, you know, choosing between that and Sushi Go, I would choose Sushi Go as, you know, introducing to new yeah. people, I think. Although this is fantastic. Quicks Deluxe is one that we've had a lot of fun with my it's family. It would have been the roll and write game on my list, but I just didn't have any roll and writes. Yeah. Um, strike. Uh, John doesn't love Strike. It's okay. I love Strike. This is, uh, you are gladiators in, our, in an arena and battling it out. And um, that's, I, I just like this one quite a bit. It is, 
you can find this one at Target too for pretty cheap. This is a lot of fun. I only placed five. You can play more with more copies, but anyway, that's why I didn't make the list. And then Downforce is a lot like Camel Up. It is a uh, betting on the racers type of game. You're trying to be the one with the most money yeah. at the end of the game. This one's a little more complex than Camel Up, and it only plays six players. That's kind of another reason why I didn't put it. And yeah, it's I want to play that one actually. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you need both, but I think if you. Downforce might be the gamier game of yeah. those two, but I think Camel Up is more of the hoot and holler fun game. Yeah, I mean, um, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, Werewords, my yeah. kids love mm -hmm. Werewords. Wits and Wagers is a fun game. I played that with the family last night, so those are some other ones, but that's it. What do you say? Yeah, yeah there's a lot of fun party games. A lot that we haven't played, missed out. You know, Wavelength is one that's really, Monstrosity is one that's getting a lot of hype. There's a lot that we haven't played, so if we'd love to hear what your favorites yes, are. Yes, put it down in the comments, Put those please. in the comments. To tell people I didn't get in touch with us. <laughs> if you enjoy our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to it. Uh, go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out all of our stuff, our podcasts, and all of that at Meepletown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, Guild number 3407, at BoardGameGeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.